Genesis chapter 49. Then Jacob summoned his sons and said, Assemble yourselves that I may tell you what will befall you in the days to come. Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. Uncontrolled as water you shall not have preeminence, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are implements of violence. Let my soul not enter into their counsel. Let not my glory be united with their assembly, because in their anger they slew men, and in their self-will they lamed oxen. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will disperse them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel." Judah, your brother, shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He couches, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion who dares rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people's. He ties his foal to the vine, and his donkey's coat to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are dull from wine, and his teeth white from milk. Zebulun will dwell at the seashore, and he shall be a haven for ships, and his flank shall be toward Sidon. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the sheep poles. When he saw that a resting place was good, and that the land was pleasant, he bowed his shoulder to bear burdens and became a slave at forced labor. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a horned snake in the path that bites the horse's heels so that his rider falls backward. For your salvation I wait, O Lord. As for Gad, raiders shall raid him, but he will raid at their heels. As for Asher, his food shall be rich, and he will yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a doe let loose. He gives beautiful words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a spring. Its branches run over a wall. The archers bitterly attacked him and shot at him and harassed him, but his bow remained firm and his arms were agile from the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, from the God of your Father who helps you, and by the Almighty who blesses you, with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breasts and of the womb, the blessings of your Father have surpassed the blessings of my ancestors, up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. May they be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed them, every one with a blessing appropriate to him. Then he charged them and said to them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought along with a field from Ephron the Hittite for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah, there they buried Isaac and his wife Rebekah, and there I buried Leah, the field and the cave that is in it, purchased from the sons of Heth. When Jacob finished charging his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Chapter 50 Then Joseph fell on his father's face, and wept over him, and kissed him. Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Now forty days were required for it, for such is the period required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him seventy days. When the days of mourning for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your sight, please speak to Pharaoh, saying, 
my father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am about to die. In my grave which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, there you shall bury me. Now therefore please let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the household of Joseph and his brothers, and his father's household. They left only their little ones and their flocks and their herds in the land of Goshen. There also went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. When they came to the threshing floor of Etad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation, and he observed seven days mourning for his father. Now when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Etad, they said, This is a grievous mourning for the Egyptians. Therefore it was named Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. Thus his sons did for him as he had charged them, for his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham had bought along with the field for a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father charged before he died, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin, for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in God's place. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. So therefore do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now Joseph stayed in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived one hundred and ten years. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's sons, also the sons of Mekir, the son of Manasseh, were born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely take care of you and bring you up from this land to the land which he promised on oath to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely take care of you, and you shall carry my bones up from here. So Joseph died at the age of one hundred and ten years, and he was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt.